Hey guys, I am Belen. How are you? Uh, well, I know that you guys had your lesson, your previous lesson with Dai. Um, but remember, uh, we're all logged in by now. So your teacher is there for you. We can help you, guide you, answer all of your questions. So we're going to basically go through this lesson all together. Uh, almost as if we were... Um, in front of each other, but we're actually not. So, um, you guys, well, here, I'm, I'm sure that you guys have logged in the um, online classroom. So, we're going to go to um, this new lesson. First of all, I know, class number five, this is class number five, I know that you guys had uh, homework to do. It was page eight from the exam maximizer. So, I uploaded this link um, so you guys can find uh, an image with the answers uh, to the homework. So I will give you uh, like a minute, let's say, uh, to check the um, to check the answers, to maybe ask a few questions. Okay, so it was page eight, but you had to do this for homework. Please check it. Let me know about your questions, your doubts. Help each other out, write in the chat so we can all share the info, all right? Remember that your questions can be somebody else's questions. So don't be afraid to ask anything, even if you think it's silly. Trust me, it isn't. We've all been there. So. I'm sure that it isn't necessary, but just in case it is for you. Here you can download the image. Okay, everything that we post here, you know, um, the handouts, anything, you can just download them. So, because you're going to be back uh, soon to class and we will give you every single handout. Okay, you don't have to print anything, you don't have to use paper or whatever okay so that is up to us um, but maybe right now if you want to work on it and edit the handouts I think it's a lot better than just taking a look at the screen maybe you can just download just like this one but download every single thing edit it on your computer and when we give you the handouts you can just complete them at home uh, after you've gotten them okay so after this checking of the homework. Uh, so we are now going to go to page 13 from the course book. Now, this is the thing. I also assumed people may still not have um, the book. So I uploaded a link to these three pages. These are the pages that we're gonna be using this class. Okay, so these three pages belong to this lesson. And we will begin with, um, I already have it here, but we can begin with number 13. So uh, we're going to be dealing with, as it says here, habits in the past. So when, when we want to refer to habits in the past, uh, we're going to be using used to and would. Okay. If you need any grammar reference, you can go to page 168. Okay. I'm encouraging you guys to do it. It's early. I'm sure that you guys are now like um, not in the mood yet to sit for the exam. But trust me, this is extremely helpful. And by the end of the year, you're going to love it. But anywho, if you want to right now, check it out and explore it. 
uh, I truly recommend it. So, take a look at these sentences and answer the questions. I used to be obsessed with music videos. When I was growing up, my mom would play 1970s music and dance around the kitchen. Now, you have a few questions there. Is she still obsessed with music videos? Did her mom often listen to 1970s music? Which underlined verb describes a past state? Which underlined verb describes a past habit? Which of the underlined verbs can you use to describe uh, both past states and habits? So, start writing in the chat. Let's see your answers. Now, to do to differ your answers, write down like this. One, for example, in the chat. Oh, my goodness, it's not. Oh, I think it's frozen. <laughs> when I come here, write like, like this. One, yes or no. Two, da, da, da. Okay, so everybody can actually understand where you're coming from. Okay. Yes, yeah, start answering. Maybe if you already know the answer to number five, you can start answering that one as long as you identify your answer to question number five. That's fine. So, is she still obsessed with music videos? No, she isn't, right? She used to be. That was something that happened in the past, but it's no longer happening anymore, all right? Then, number two, did her mother often listen to 1970s music? Yes, very good. So, this would play implies a habit. Number three, which underlined verb describes a past state? Yes, used to. Very good. Well, used to be obsessed in this case, but used to is the correct answer. Number four, which underlined verb describes a past habit? As we mentioned before, yes, exactly would because I had already, I had already said so. And then number five, which of the underlined verbs can you use to describe both past states and habits? That is indeed used to. Okay, so when we want to, we can use used to. For both okay but would play only as it says here to describe a past habit all right now uh, look at sentences from one to four is it possible to use both would and used to well this is the task read the questions well the sentences in this case and identify remember the different uses of would that we established here okay so would only for past habits used to for both okay both meaning past state and past habit okay so let's see what do you think about number one my parents would always listen to classical music while we were having dinner can you use both Yes, you can. Very good. I mean, guys, if you have would, that means that you can have used to. All right? But not the other way around. Not necessarily. Sometimes you can use used to and would is not permitted. And sometimes you can use used to and, it, and using would is permitted. It all depends on the use. Okay? Number two, my parents used to go to jazz festival. Uh, just festival sorry every year yes also uh, in this case uh, it is a habit so both can be used number three my dad used to have a really old radio exactly no it was a past state uh, so no 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 habit in this case it's not like I'm having a radio I'm having a radio I'm having a radio you know that would be a habit in this case, it was a state and that's it. 
And then number four, my mom used to know all the words to every song by Madonna. Yeah, right. No, I mean, she knew them. It's not like she forgot every single day and remembered uh, the following. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, it, it is a state. It was in a habit. Knowing a song is not a habit. It's something that you, you just know. Uh, so yes, in this case, no, you cannot use both. Okay? Now, we're going to skip the speaking discussion because I want to focus on some speaking here, well, speaking, typing, and so on and so forth. Uh, but you're going to complete the text with the present simple, present continuous, used to or would forms of verbs in brackets. Sometimes more than one answer is possible, okay? So I want you to focus on this exercise in particular. Here you have it. Uh, up until number 10. So start reading my life as a punk and uh, we'll check in a couple of, of minutes, all right? Well, I mean, yes. Unless you want to do it all together. Do you want to? But if we do it all together, we're going to be analyzing if it is a state or a habit. And you guys have to answer in the chat. Are you willing to do it? Come on, I mean, does everybody agree? Okay, so I always say that the best time of my life was when I... used to be, yes, a punk. It's a time that I look back on fondly and still smile when I think of those wonderful people, their fantastic haircuts and clothes and their great personalities. So, in this case, being a punk, right, was a past eight. So, uh, this person actually isn't a punk anymore. Uh, so that's why we're using used to be. And uh, in this case, in the present, the person is smiling. And the looking back is because you're remembering a time of your life. You're bringing back a memory. So the memory is in the past. But the smiling and the thinking of them, the people from her past, are um, in the present, okay? So these two actions are in the present. Then, on Saturdays, I, number three, well, yeah, in this, um, in this number in particular, in this gap in particular, both are possible because we're talking about a habit so it is used to go or would go down the King's uh, Road in London, okay? Then I pay attention to the sentence that follows or the phrase that follows. Yes, Ooh. yes, I mean, again. For number four, used to meet or would meet because it was a past habit. So I used to meet or I would meet punks from all over. And we Okay, so a clue we have and and if we're still referring to a past habit, then still the same. Used to or would. So Used to just walk around or would just walk around. All right. Sit in the pubs, look in the shops and get searched by the police. That was a very good way to spend a Saturday. So now I'm in my 50s. Okay, this person has grown up a lot. I. Be careful, remember present tenses. Okay, for this one, we can have both. I work or I am working. 
in insurance and I've got three children. Both are possible. I work or I am working. But just recently, I've started to return to my punk roots. Although I... I am getting older. Yes, I am getting older. Why I am getting older? Because this person isn't considered old yet. Okay, it's in her 50s. So it's like we would never call this person old or elderly. So she's getting older, but hasn't quite yet. Uh, I've realized I still... Number eight, yes, love, good. Love is a state verb, so no continues. I don't care what McDonald's says. So I still love going to gigs and hanging around with punks. I, number nine. I am discovering, yes. Sorry, I am discovering fantastic new bands and I, we have an and, right? So remember cohesion and I am enjoying myself so much. Okay, questions so far? Any questions? Are you sure? This is your time, but of course, as you know, we're here for you, so... You can ask afterwards if you don't want to. Now, I didn't show you what I just did. So, you're going to go back to the online classroom. And please click on this handout. There it is. Do you have it there? Okay. So, sure, you found it. Uh, we're going to work on this handout. We're going to do it all together. Uh, habits in the past. Okay, don't go really down because that's where all the keys, I mean, all the keys, yeah, the key to this handout is. So, uh, I want to show you guys the differences between used to and would. For example, used to do and would do uh, something or whatever. Uh, so, I first showed you the positive, negative, and the question formats. So, so you can have examples like in the positive, he used to read a lot. And with would, he would read a lot. Uh, in the negative, we didn't use to read a lot. We wouldn't read a lot. In the, I mean, as a question, did you used to read a lot? Would you read a lot? So, we use used to and would to talk about past habits and we're emphasizing that they are no longer true. I used to collect all the autographs of film stars when I was a teenager. She doesn't do it anymore. Uh, I would go up to town on my own. She doesn't do this now. Used to can describe actions and states, but would can only describe actions. This is uh, the habit part and the state part. We already knew it as past states and past habits. So replace actions for habits and that would be exactly the same. So all the teenagers used to or would scream at pop concerts because this is an action. Maybe with the word action is easier for you. I don't know, just find what's best for you. They used to be crazy about the Beatles, not they would be crazy about the Beatles because being crazy is a state, not an action, okay? Because this being crazy is like being in love or um, desiring, okay? So it's not a habit, it's a state. Used to is much more common than would. Do not confuse used to do, uh, which is a past tense, with be or get used to doing something, which can be present, past, or future. So... This is the thing, here you have some examples so you don't make mistakes. When you are or you get used to doing something, it means that you are or you become accustomed to doing something. So for example, I used to work at weekends. This means in the past I worked at weekends, but I don't now. 
And then, I am used to working at weekends means I often work at weekends, it doesn't worry me. So, this first example is the one that we are dealing with right now. It is a past um, tense, okay? And we're talking about habits in the past, either habits or states, okay? Uh, now, well, in this case, it was a habit, but anyhow. But here, as you can see, it's in the present tense, all right? Um, so it means that you are accustomed to doing something. So I'm used to working at weekends. It means that since I already work during the weekends, I really don't mind. That's exactly what it means. The question form is, are you used to working at weekends? Uh, being get used to can be followed by a noun. He wasn't used to criticism and found it hard to accept it. Now, I'm going to ask why. Why do you think that used to can be followed by ing or a noun such as criticism? Come on, start uh, typing your answers in the chat and sharing with your friends and partners and me or your teacher. Why? How can you tell that it's either criticism or working and that it is very much the same when it comes to format. And no, this is not continuous. So, working here is a gerund. Remember, when we have a verb and we transform we want to transform it into a noun, we use the gerund. This is not continuous. It doesn't have a verb to be here. So this is a gerund. It is a verb acting as a noun with its ing form. So it would be the same to use a gerund than to use a noun, right? Because this is a verb acting as a noun. So it's practically the same. Not the same, but it is helpful. So he wasn't used to criticism and found it hard to accept. People hadn't criticized him before, so he didn't like it. Okay, now let's put this into practice. Uh, I want you to practice the be you're getting used to, okay, which is, where is it? Here, this one. All of this part of the handout, okay, just put it into practice and let's check. And do not cheat, don't go below. I mean, if you cheat, it doesn't make any sense. You guys have to learn. Do you think that we can check now? Tell me through the chat, please. Tell me if we can check. Well, me or your teacher. Okay, so now I'm allowing you guys to go here. So, number two, well, are used to 
is used to please read them and check with your answers. Remember the easiest thing is to download the videos. So, I mean, sorry, the handouts. Uh, if you just download them, you can just type them on your computers and you can um, edit them, okay? We will give you every single handout when you come back, but this is like the best way to do so. You just edit them on your computer and that's it, and you don't waste any paper. Okay, so have you got any questions? It goes back right up. So let me know. Okay, uh, we're going to continue with activity B. It says underline the correct form of the verbs. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, now, I want you guys to read, I don't know if the image is good or not, um, I'm going to try and zoom in, there we go, I think that's a lot better, isn't it, I know it's like extremely zoomed in, but at least you can get the whole thing, so read this text, choose the correct answer, I mean there are in italics, so one of the two have, uh, the, I mean, you have to choose. So, let's get cracking on that one. Remember to identify if we're referring to an action, slash habit, same thing, or state, okay? If you don't know how to figure out if it's a state or not, think of state verbs. You know, they're very black and white. So I would just say focus on that, on identifying if it is like a like a yes or no kind of a question, like I believe or I don't believe in something, uh, I don't know, religious-wise or anything you believe in, um, you like or you don't like something, okay? Think of that, uh, very black and white, uh, especially because you cannot have a continuous and progressive aspect towards it. Um, I'll give you just one more minute. Don't cheat. Don't go below to the key. Just do it on your own. Try and see how much you can do. If you have downloaded the file, then you can just open like a notepad, you know, those post-its on your computer and type all the answers. So, uh, years ago, let's, let's begin checking, shall we? Years ago, nobody in my village would lock their front doors. We, number two, remember to try and type your answers in the chat so we can all share the answers. Yes, used to feel safe, in those days, last month, I 
Met. Very good. Last month implies always past simple, unless I'm going to start describing an action that stopped at some point. So, last month I met my neighbor in the street when I. And this is where. Was walking. Very good. Now, I mean, <laughs> yes. Walk is sort of like a habit. I'm not going to say no to that. Uh, but it's not like the person is not walking anymore. So unless we're referring to this person as an uh, as, as a disabled person uh, who cannot walk anymore, then we might consider wood as an option, but this is not the case. Uh, we didn't check that for number two. Uh, the feeling, it would be a state, right? Uh, not a habit. So that's why wood is off the table. So when I was walking home from the shops and she, number five, told me some bad news. Excellent. Fits, number six. Were breaking into people's houses while they were, oh, sorry, while they, <laughs> oh, damn it, I gave it away. <laughs> while they were sitting in their back gardens. Uh, I, number eight. Yes, it is realized. Now, this is important. It's not that you cannot say I was realized. You can. I'm not saying that you, that you can't. But this is the thing. Um, the realizing part is... Like, for example, you would say, I was realizing that my dog wasn't feeling well um, when, I don't know, my partner rushed and grabbed it and started CPR. I don't know, very exaggerated um, example, but it's very, very rare that I would say realizing, like, because that means darse cuenta, <laughs> okay? So uh, if you're realizing something, as a progressive aspect, that's ex I mean, that's extremely weird, mainly because it would imply like, I don't know, less than a second or whatever. So I realized that I, number nine, yes, didn't want, wasn't wanting, uh, it's not an option because the verb want is a state verb. Okay, so I didn't want to live there anymore. So last week, I, number 10, moved, yes, to this little flat. Uh, unless I'm going to tell something about the moving day, uh, I would always use moved, okay? If I'm referring to something that happened during the moving day and stuff like that, yes. I was moving houses and I was very upset. Uh, or I was moving houses and the, um, the first day, I don't know, the truck broke down or whatever. I, number 11, yes, I'm not used to because I have the two, right? So I'm not used to being in the town yet, but people are more friendly than I, number 12, thought. Very good. Remember that think is the state verb. Um, as a synonym of believe. If you refer to think as, you know, truly thinking of something, then you can totally use it in the progressive, but not as a believe. In this case, it's a synonym, a synonym of believe. Bah, tongue twister. <laughs> uh, so I thought they might be, and I feel much happier and safer. Remember, you have got the, ooh. The answer is here, but that's only for you. Now, after reading the exam tips, choose the correct option for questions from 1 to 50. Now, this is important. This is an example of um, an exercise that you're going to encounter in the exam. Now, uh, this is not new because you've already been practicing this kind of 
uh, exercises for a long time. But the thing is, I chose to give you some exam tips, as you have here now, I'm going to read it with you, uh, because it's not as simple as you may think. It has many, many variants, so I want to go through all of them with you. So first and foremost, read the text quickly to get a general idea. Do not fill in the gaps. I know that this, I don't know, you're doing the exam and you're in a rush and you think that you're going to run out of time or whatever. Trust me, it actually helps a lot. Why? Because sometimes the word that you need to choose here has a lot to do with the rest of the sentence. So if you have absolutely no idea of what the sentence is about, the text is about, and the intention of the text, then you might actually mess it up if you just read gap per gap isolated. Then, uh, second tip, read again, stop at each gap, predict what the missing word or phrase might be. Now, what I mean with this is, identify if you need, uh, I don't know, if you need a verb, an adjective, an adverb, what type of word you're actually missing there, okay? Uh, if it is a phrase, then what do you, sorry, what do you need? A phrasal verb, a compound noun, or whatever, okay? Exam tip three. Look at the options for each gap carefully. Try putting each of the options in the gap to see which one fits best. Now, all of the options are going to look very, very similar, very, very possible, but only one actually fits here. So this is the... It's not a problem, but it's tricky in a way. They do this on purpose. So the idea is that you play with all the options, but identify which is the correct one, okay? Some, I mean, you're gonna have to start crossing them out, like, okay, this is no good because of this, this, and that, okay? This is no good because of this, this, and that. But uh, you're gonna have to start playing with them eventually. I don't know. I don't know, for 10, for example, 10 precedes a preposition, preposition 2. So with 10, you're going to have to see if all of them or only the one that um, is followed by preposition 2, for example. Exam tip 4. Take the words on either side of the gap to see if the option you have chosen goes with these. Okay? Meaning... The word before and the, go, um, the word afterwards, which is exactly what I was saying. For example, here again, number five, I have a preposition. I need to find which of these are followed by preposition up, okay? So that's why that's very important for me to do some ruling out. Then, except tip number five, read the whole text again. Make sure everything makes sense. <laughs> I know this is stupid, or it sounds silly at least, but trust me, it isn't. It isn't stupid and it isn't silly. There's a lot of comprehension here, and that's on purpose, so you have to be one step ahead. Meaning, an entire sentence may be the opposite of what you chose based on context, and you just need opposites, for example, okay? So that's the thing. Read the whole thing because you might be choosing the wrong word just because, I don't know, uh, you just focused on the sentences in isolation and not as a whole idea. Uh, do not leave a blank. Now, this is very important for you guys not to leave a blank um, because... I mean, you've got options here, right? Remember from class number one, they are not going to take points from you if you make a mistake, which means at least choose one, the one that seems closer to the correct answer. And you might actually get away with it, okay? But choose something. I don't care, but just do so. If you're not sure, choose the one which seems more, uh, most likely. Okay, so uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to do this. It's not easy. Do not worry. I'm not rushing you. And uh, you can...
click, uh, sorry, type in the chat and you can share with the group. That's important. Guys, do you think that we can check?
just tell me through the chat what me or your teacher <laughs> let's see number one well zero is already there so for number one the correct one is wood very good Yes, that's okay. Number two, behavior. Number three, game. What about number four, guys? Number four, ability. Very good. Number five, What about six? What do you think? Well, what do you choose? <laughs> yep, a rose. What about number seven? Yep, prove. What about eight? This word exists, so you guys don't say, I am not agree, which is an abomination, okay? So, disagreed. Excellent, that would be number eight. Number nine. Hmm. Silence. Very good. What about ten? Okay, very good. What about eleven? Excellent. Um, bean, 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 12. Well, shrunk. There we go. 13. Stated. What about 14? Accept. First one. And 15. Okie dokes. Career. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the answers here and I'm going to give you some time so you guys can ask the questions to your teacher, either me or Dai or Lu, ask away, let's check everything together, help your, help your partners out, help yourself out and clear any sort of doubt. Okay, uh, are you all good? Don't worry, I mean, remember that we're still gonna have some more time at the end of this class, but anyhow, ask away. So, we have covered the handout, all of it, so excellent. And now we're gonna go to course book, page 14. Remember, if by any means you just don't have the book because you haven't bought it yet, I uploaded the pages here so beam, beam, beam. now this is I mean this is all about writing and we are going to focus on informal email um, we're gonna be using informal language okay so that's good you can use contractions you can use hey friend and that would be just fine um, Remember, the references are extremely important. So page 182, that's where you can find a lot of things. Trust me, I will show it to you when we finish. Um, but keep this in mind, like highlighted or whatever. 
Um, now, for this, these questions, uh, I'm going to read them and I'm going to be answering as myself, as Belen, uh, but I want you guys to start writing your answers to one of the three questions. Like, you choose number one and you answer number one and you tell your partners about number one. Or, I don't know, you might choose three and you do that. Okay, so we can all interact together and um, plus, if you're not my student, um, your teacher is actually going to be typing uh, their answer right now. So it's good if we can have that sort of interaction because we cannot see each other. So uh, how is it easy to see live music where you live? Uh, right now with the coronavirus, it's not <laughs> at all. Everything is canceled. Everything has been postponed, um, but we're hopeful. Um, previously in my country, especially here in Buenos Aires, uh, it's actually very, very easy. Many artists come here and they perform, um, they release their albums and they choose this country to tour. So I would say that uh, even like, I mean, our inhabitants, you know, playing music, making music. Like if you go to any bar, you can have a lot of local bands, even jazz, tango. I mean, anything that you can imagine, you can find it here. And it's even better than international music. Um, would you travel abroad to go to a music festival or concert? Um, yeah, I would. I mean, if I had the money, I totally would. Uh, I mean, it's good if you go abroad, have some vacation and take advantage of your time there and go to a festival or a concert. Yeah. Remember to type your answers. Okay. I want to see what you guys have to say about it. And then number three, what advice would you give to someone who is visiting your country about where to, where to see live music? Oof. Well, um... If like a big band is performing, I would just recommend that that gig, uh, that specific show. But if not, in Almagro, like near the Abasto, that neighborhood in particular, um, Villa Crespo, um, San Palermo places, um, many, 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 many local people pay to perform at different bars or restaurants, uh, well, San Telmo, of course, um, you know, downtown. But I mean, there are a lot of closer neighborhoods to us <laughs> that, um, I mean, in which you can enjoy music. So thank you for sharing to the ones who shared. Because <laughs> So read the exam task and answer the questions. Who do you have to write to? Why are you writing? And what kind of style do you have to write in? Well, the style, we already knew it. Here, it is informal, but I want you to answer number one and number two. So please go back to the chat. Start typing your answers. So we have to write to Josh, okay? Uh, here it is. So he sent us this and we have to reply, okay? Uh, respond. Number two, why are you writing? Well, we have to give some information about where to see live music in our town. So that's why we're mainly writing. Okay, and as we said, number three is informal. Okay, so you have received an email from your English friend Josh. Read this part of the email and write your email to Josh. I'm really looking forward to visiting you this summer. If possible, I would really like to see some live music. Can you tell me what kind of music is popular with you and your friends? 
How is it easy, sorry, easy to get tickets for concerts? Thanks, Josh. Now, remember, you're going to write any, like any writing piece that you do during this year is going to be between 140 and 190 words. Remember that if you go over 190 words, every word, like every extra word has to be meaningful to your writing piece and has to be relevant to your writing piece, okay? Um, so look at the model of the email and choose the word or phrase which is most appropriate for an informal email. Uh, now, I know just by taking a look at it, you may find it easy, um, but I do want to do it all together. Okay, so, hi Josh. Yes, I'm really looking forward to your visit too. It's good you want to see some live music while you're here because in my town, what is number one? Yes, there is a music festival every summer. Number, uh, and number two, you will be able to see lots of local bands play. Now, as you can see, the two options that we have chosen, this one and this one, both have contractions. So that makes it more informal than the other versions. Okay. Now, the takes place makes it more formal. Okay. Uh, more formal than there is, of course. Um, and having the opportunity is way more formal than being able to. Um, plus, just so you know, phrasal verbs are informal. Okay. Uh, do not worry because uh, when you're writing, remember, yeah, some of you asked um, this last time, so I'm just going to say it. Uh, if you use phrasal verbs in an essay, that's fine because your essays are semi-formal, okay? Do not panic, let's move on. None of them is very famous, but there is a fantastic atmosphere there, and I always, number three, yes, enjoy going along, okay? Uh, the tickets are very reasonable and you can spend the whole day there. Of course, like all my friends, I am number four, mainly interested in, very good, rock bands, but you can find reggae and traditional music there too. Number five, you won't be disappointed because there's something for everyone. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but like the option that we have chosen has a hyphen. Can you see it there? This is the thing. Here you have a semicolon punto y coma, just in case. So the semicolon is much more formal than a hyphen, okay? So that's also clue, apart from, you know, the contractions, okay? Plus, here you have a non-defining relative clause, so that also makes it more formal. I mean, just... Like, relative clauses uh, are more likely to be found in written uh, things than in spoken ones. So, um, this implies that relative clauses uh, would fit much better into informal or semi-formal writing pieces. Then, there aren't any large music venues near uh, where I live, so it's not that easy for me to go to big concerts very often, number six. Yes, but, excellent. I always tell my students that I truly dislike when you guys start, I mean, when you guys use but at the beginning of the sentence, I truly dislike it. Um, I think that you have a, a level that allows you to not go to this resource, but I mean, you know that you know that it's allowed, so yeah, it's more informal than however, definitely. Uh, one of my favorite bands, Mystery Jets, is playing in the nearest city on August twenty second. So number seven, 
If you like, I could. Excellent. This option, we have the conditional. Well, here you have a conditional as well. I hadn't noticed the other part exactly, but yes, like much more informal than being interested in something. Uh, so if you like, I could get the tickets for us to go to that. Number eight. Yes, let me know what you think. Uh, Alice. All right. I know that you can imagine this, but this is where we're heading, okay? Writing an informal letter. Now, which of the expressions from one to four could you use to end the email to Josh? I hope to hear from you soon. I'll look forward to hearing from you soon. Can't wait to see you in the summer. Don't hesitate to get in touch if you have any more questions. Okay. Type your answers. Let's see if all of you agree. So, the correct ones would be number one and number three, because these are number one and three are more informal, and two and four are more formal. The getting in touch part is more formal, okay? So we're going to do number five, there we go, read the exam task and take the information you can include in your email to Max. You have received an email from a student called Max. Read this part of the email and write your answer, your email, sorry, to Max. Uh, I am moving to your town soon to go to college. Can you tell me what kind of things there are to do in the evening for students and what you like doing best? Thanks, Max. Now. Let's see, here. Take the information you could include in your email. Do you think that you could include number one? Recommend some places to go. Yes, of course, yes, that's exactly what he asks. Uh, number two, offer to take Max out one evening. What do you think? Sure that you can, yeah, totally. I mean, it is informal. Uh, but I mean, you can't make it informal. I mean, he's not asking for it, but you can totally do it. Uh, number three, tell him about the most expensive restaurants in your town. Do you think that he would be interested in that? Yeah, no, exactly. Complain about the lack of entertainment venues. What do you think? Yes? No? Totally no. Yes, exactly. Why would I be complaining on my email? I mean, first of all, he had many things he wanted to know. Me complaining in an email is not an option. Uh, number five, describe a typical evening out in detail. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense for me to describe a night out thoroughly when, guys, this is not what he wants. I mean, he just wants some information so when he comes, he can just go out. And then number six, describe your favorite kind of evening out and what you like it, why you like it. So, yeah, totally. Number six is perfect. Now, write I for informal or F for formal next to the phrases, okay? So, I would advise you to, yes, formal. Number two, the best place to eat, to eat is informal. Three, we really must go to, yes, informal. Four. If you feel like dancing, there is a good club in informal, very good. Five, you should definitely try, yep, 
informal. And the number six, I would highly recommend visiting. I did it in the, in a like a British posh accent. I mean, not as much, but so you guys could notice. Yes, formal. Now, as you can imagine, you guys would have to write uh, your informal letter here. Okay, I'm just gonna open it with you so you can see it and you can ask questions right now if you have any. You have received this email from your English speaking friend, Carol. When you visit me next month, what would you like to do? You said something about visiting historic places, but I know you like sports as well. I've just passed my driving test so we can go around easily. Have, have you got any questions for me about your visit? Write your reply email between 140 and 190 words. Check page 182 for further guide, guidance. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to show you page 182. I think it's crucial that you guys are using it as a tool. Here, 182. So, informal letter, email. You have a task. You have a sample, okay, from a real person. So, you have the do's. You have the useful language, okay? So, everything you need is here, or at least a lot, I would say. So, Focus on these, um, on this information, okay? This page is also guiding you to page 138, so you can also visit that one. Okay, please check it, read all the do's, please pay attention to that, all right? Now, uh, I want us to work on our last thing, okay, which is, ding, 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 here it is. So, we're going to work on the course book, page 15. Now, this is the review. What does it mean? That it's going to be sort of like a, the revision of the unit, okay? So, we're going to be revising everything that we learned or went through during the first unit. So, go to page 15 from the book. Just this one, okay? You have four exercises. It's, I mean, you have multiple choice. I mean, it's not going to be that long, but I do want you to focus on it. Remember, I'm just gonna say one more time, you have it right here. Okay, and while you start working, just in case you didn't pay attention, you're gonna have page 10 to do for homework. Okay, so you're gonna be doing page 10, oh, I gotta move it, but you're gonna be doing page 10 for homework. Okay, so uh, plus you're gonna have some online homework. Okay, uh, this is exam practice, this is listening, that we couldn't cover today, so I want us to cover listening. So, we're gonna work on page 15, check that one, and then you're gonna do the rest of the homework for next class. Take your time, you can type your answers. You can help each other out. Remember that for exercise number one, you can't 
change the word given. Okay. So no taking if it says took. Okay. How are you guys doing? Let us know. Please remember me, whomever is your teacher. We're all logged in. We can help you. Your partners can help you. You can check. Some groups already have a WhatsApp group, so um, don't resort to that. We're all here. Uh, on this platform uh, so let's use this let's use this chat in which we are all connected type our answers just hang in there very close to finishing so stretch and continue working on the page
Okay, shall we? So, number one, I enjoyed learning to play the guitar and I would like to take it up again one day. I used to enjoy, would you let me type it in? Let's just see. Number one. I used to enjoy. Number two, we. Yes, would always go. What about number three? I. Remember the verb to be first. I am used to, and don't forget the germ. Okay? Don't forget the verb to be. Number four. I'm going to this. Her career took off instantly. Yep, very good. Means it succeeded from day to night or in a very short amount of time. Number five, unfortunately, I don't take after my grandfather. Meaning, I don't have the same skills, I don't have the same personality, I don't have the same feelings. In this case, we're, I mean, he's referring to skills, he or she. And then number six, I, don't forget it, I am getting used to, all right? I think that's better. I think that's even better and you guys can read it more properly like that. That's my guess. So number two, I, okay, I'm just going to lower this and take it below. Take it So number one, I don't like classic mu classical music. Number two, I don't understand what you are saying. Very good. What about number three? I, yes, because it is a synonym of belief, so I don't think, you can't be, I am not thinking, remember. This think, being a synonym of believe, is a state verb. Then number four, she's never at home. She is always doing, very good. Fine. Traditional music is getting more and more popular, meaning it hasn't become very popular yet, okay? It's in the process of becoming popular, but it's not popular around the country, let's say, just yet. Number six, you... are playing really well today because I have the word today, right? So this means exception, extraordinary, temporary maybe. So 
Yeah, pressing continues. Any questions about this? I don't want you getting any, so let me know, please. Are you sure? So, for number three, I try and, one is go, good. I try and go running as often as I can, as I can, sorry. Number two, I often have friends Round in the evening, very good. That means that they come over, right? Number three, let's go to the theater soon. I mean, let's go out is one thing. That means to go outside, but let's go to the theater, okay? Not for the theater, because if you went for the theater, uh, then would mean that the theater invited you. Uh, or, for example, imagine that you go to Paseo La Plaza, where you have theater, but you also have stand-up specials, and I don't know, maybe you have a streaming of a movie, whatever. Let's just imagine those three scenarios. So you go to Paseo La Plaza, and uh, I don't know, the, the guy at the front door or um, at the end of the line starts asking, um, I don't know, are you here for the Boca show? No, I, I came here for the theater, okay? Meaning out of the three options, I'm here for one of them, okay? But it's not this scenario in particular. Uh, and then number four, he's always, going on the computer to check his messages, okay? Now, for number four, I'm just going to, again, type the answers, which I think is going to be easier. Number one is fans. What do you think about number two? Remember that you have them here, okay? So that's why not taking so long. Good, collection. Three. Downloads. What about four? Once, don't say once, please. Once. Uh, number five. Released, very good. What about number six? Available. Seven. Tastes. Let's see. And last but not least, concerts. So let me show you just to see just so you guys can see and so I can see if I wrote it correctly. If you wrote something different, please type it. Let's share it in the chat. Let's talk about it together. Ask for help, questions, whatever it is that you have. All right. So uh, this is basically our way of wrapping this whole unit up, okay, which is bands and fans. You have everything here uploaded and stuff, but, uh, well, you still have a lot of homework to do. You have the online writing, online homework, uh, these two, and you also have page 10 from the exam maximizer, which I uploaded, so you can't say, ooh, I don't have the book or whatever. Okay, um, please remember that the Institute is also open for you guys to go and purchase the books if it's easier for you to go by the pages instead of, I don't know, scrolling up and down. That's up to you. Um, remember that with all the handouts, you can download them uh, and edit them on your computers. You don't have to print anything. 
Uh, I already have all your handouts, so don't make me print in vain, okay? Um, well, it's been a pleasure. Uh, let's continue with the questions and stuff, but for, I mean, from my end at least, uh, in the recording version, I am done. Uh, so I hope you guys understood everything. We're here for you. We can check anything. We're going to meet soon. So don't panic, please. This is a very extraordinary situation. Uh, I can't wait to see you. Uh, can't wait. I'm sorry, it's late. <laughs> um, well, take care and we'll see you around. Bye.